Well, if you've ever driven by a construction site before they put down the foundation, you might wonder what all these pipes are sticking up in the air. Well, this is actually our ground plumbing, our rough end plumbing. It has to go in before we pour the concrete foundation, and it needs to go in the right spot before we pour the foundation because it's going to be hard to change afterwards. This big white pipe you see here is our sewer line, and it comes from all different parts of the house where different bathrooms, kitchen, everything is, and it all flows, gravity flows, towards the front of the house because on this particular lot, our city sewer is on the very front, so we need to flow downhill towards it. There's no pressure behind it like there is a water line, so we've got to flow downhill. They're also going to come in and install a copper water line that will run from the city water main throughout the whole house. It doesn't have to go deep in this ditch because it's not going to freeze underneath the house. Gravity's not as important on that. We just need to get it down low enough that it's not going to freeze, and that won't be a problem underneath the slab. It'll be more than warm enough. As you can see, there's a lot of rock here that we dug up to put this line in. We're going to have a great foundation because we're going to be on solid rock, but it is hard when you're putting in your line. What's going to happen is we're going to backfill this after everything's in place and we get our inspection tomorrow. So we're going to have to go ahead and come in and put sand all around this pipe because we don't want to push this rock in and actually break this PVC pipe or else we'd have a sewer leak underneath our foundation. It's going to be very hard to fix. We'd have to jackhammer the concrete foundation, get down there, be really a mess. Also, we need to check this sewer line before we cover it up to make sure there's no leaks. So what we're going to do is put caps on everything and then add a little bit of air pressure and have it hold the air pressure for a while and make sure that none of it leaks out. If we're not leaking air, then we're not going to leak any sewer gas or any water or anything and we'll be okay. Let's go over to the other end. Now there's always a lot of plumbing going on in the bathrooms, a few things you need to watch for. Number one being called WC on your blueprints. What WC stands for is water closet. What it really is is a toilet. This is going to be your toilet, the big drain right here. This is going to be the water in the back to come up and refill the tank that sits right above the toilet. Now this is known as a vent stack. The reason you have this is anywhere that you have water draining, it creates a vacuum. Something needs to fill in behind that water. What it fills in with is air. This vent stack will run all the way up through this wall. It'll go through our attic and out through the top of the roof. It'll have a cover on it so rain won't come down in it. But anytime we flush the toilet or we drain water down a shower or a bathtub or a sink, it's got to fill with air, so it'll pull air down through there. If you live in an older home and you flush your toilet, it sounds like a jet engine taking off and makes a lot of noise. Probably this is crimped somewhere up top. The cover's crimped around it or a bird has built a nest in it or something. It's got clogged up. It's having a hard time pulling air, so the water's having a hard time going down the pipe. Get someone up there, open that up, get the clogs out. The toilet will flush a lot easier or your sink will drain a lot better. Across the bathroom here, we have where our bathtub will go. And this is going to be the drain for our bathtub. It's got a little P-trap on the bottom so we don't let any gas back up through the sewer into there. The P-trap will hold water down in the bottom. And the water will never go all the way over, so that way no gas will come back up into make our bathroom smell. Got to have that. You got to have a way to vent that. So again, we got our vent over here in our exterior wall. It'll run down this direction. These are our copper water lines coming in. The one with the red cover is hot, the one with the blue cover is cold. And the reason you wrap it is wherever it's going to touch the foundation or the concrete, the chemical reaction could go off and eat holes through the copper, so we want to go ahead and wrap it in plastic. Over here we have what's known as a clean out. If you ever get a clog somewhere in your sewer line, you've got to stick a snake, it's called, it's a cable down in there, and get that clog broken up. Now one way to do it is climb up on the roof and stick the snake all the way down your vent stack, but this roof is going to be really high, so over here we have a clean out that will actually stick out of the exterior wall. So you can just come up to the outside, pull that off, stick your snake down in there, and clean out any of your clogs. Actually they did this all the way around the home. Anywhere they have a vent stack on the exterior wall, they went ahead and put a clean out there. The kitchen is fairly similar, but there's a few little things you should be watching for. Let's go take a look over there. Now our kitchen setup is very similar to the bathrooms, but a few little things we have to change because this kitchen has an island with a sink in the middle of it. So we've got to get our lines over to the sink in the island and we don't have a wall that we can go up and down. We're going to have our island here, our sink will be right here, we'll have a connection going into this pipe, but again, we can't create a vacuum, we need to give it a way to breathe. So we've got this vent behind it and we've actually got a loop here. They're actually connected up top and they're connected at the bottom. So. Our sewer water will drain straight down, go into our pipe, run back out to the front of the house. We're going to catch air through this vent pipe. Now since it's not going straight up, we have to actually run it back to a wall. So you can see down here we're connected to it. It runs across. And this is a wall between our garage and our kitchen. And here's our vent stack. Just like in the bathroom, it'll run all the way straight up 
and go out the roof of the house. Next to it here, this three inch pipe is not part of the vent system. This is a separate drain pipe. It's running up the wall to catch a bathroom upstairs. Now, it's very important that you pick out things like this before you build the house, before you pour that concrete foundation, because again, it's gonna to be too expensive to come back and add it later. If you go with the pier and beam foundation where you have wooden trusses across, instead of concrete, you can come back and make some changes and add a few things as long as you can make it drain. You're gonna save a lot of money either way if you do it right before you ever start it.